VIP access. VIP access with Aniko and Africa Loud. Welcome back to VIP Access. This is the ELS podcast from Kenya in this side of the continent. I am always happy to unveil my guest. And the guest I'm having today, we actually share a first name. I'm not sure if she knows that. So anybody who knows me from back, back in the day before I picked up the use of my other name, Aniko, I used to go by the name Rose, and I actually really love that name. Every time someone receives Mpesa, they're like, ah, you are Rose. I'm like, yeah, I am, proudly. So it's cool to have my namesake <laughs> on the podcast for the first time. She can't even believe this. <laughs> I'm actually in shock. I didn't know that was your name. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Actually, namesake. Rosemary, Rosemary. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God, I'll never see you the same way again. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? And it was actually Saudi Soul who made me use the name Aniko, Aniko. because when I, I mean, we were friends, we were working together. And so when I got my first job, TV job or media job, they were like, this is a time to just call yourself Aniko Owoko, you know, it rhymes. Yeah. And you know, it's so rosemary beautiful. is not like you can't remember it. It's it, not memorable. It doesn't really bring out the character. No, it okay, doesn't. Yeah. No, Aniko it doesn't. definitely brings and out the character. And to be honest, even though I like the name Rosemary, mm -hmm. I just didn't, I don't know, I just didn't feel it. But yeah. the moment I picked up Aniko, I was like, yeah, you owned yeah. it. That's cool. I owned it, yeah. Love so, it. So, what's up, Rosa? Wow, namesake. <laughs> <laughs> Not even the vibe feels different. I know. The only Rosa. <laughs> yes, the only Rosa. This reminds me of actually the time when I had to change my name. Do you know, people kept confusing me. I even went for an interview once and someone called me Rosa Ree, mm. who's a Tanzanian artist. Mm. Yeah. And so from then onwards, I went on my social media, everything, and I just changed it to the only Rosa. So so, so do you actually introduce yourself as the only Rosa or Rosa? I do. The only Rosa. Okay. So the only Rosa. The yes. only one. Yeah. I love that. It's actually become part of who I am now. Honestly. I think so. Yeah. I think so. It's really dope, actually. Thank yeah. you. It was a very random decision, so I'm glad it's paying off. No, it is. I loved it. When I saw it on yeah. uh, one of your albums, I was like, I like this because she's the only Rosa. Do you ever walk in somewhere and someone calls you Rosemary? Like, do you feel like out of character? I do. I do. And even <laughs> my mama mostly calls me like Rosie. Oh, yeah. that's. I feel out of character, feel, but yeah. in a different character. So out of this character, but that other character. Like, it's a, yeah. it's a, it's a name... What one you bunny call me with? Like some aunties will call me that. Yeah. Not so, just you didn't expect a random person in a exactly. room to just call you that. Yeah. yeah. I feel you. That's me too with yeah. my name. What do your like um parents so, not parents, but like you have a brother? Rosa, yeah, I do. I have an older mm. brother who now everyone calls me Rosa. I used to have like those pet names at home, but now everyone calls me Rosa. But when I was younger, do you know I didn't know my name was Rosa until when I was I think 13. Yeah. So, let me tell you the crazy story. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. It's, Aniko, it's, it's actually crazy. I feel like I was living a lie. And I actually think that's where now my personality, the artist, came from. When I realized Rosa was actually my real name. Yeah. So, when I was younger, I used to call myself Rosaline. Then... You know how when you're doing your exams, you have to go with your birth certificate so they can register you. So I go, I ask my mom for my birth certificate. She gives it to me and it's written Rosalie. And I'm like, this is not my birth certificate, but the date is correct. Then she goes like, that's actually your name. I don't know why you've been calling yourself Rosaline for the last 13 years. And I swear I had an identity crisis for like months. I... I was, but most of I was happy. I was so excited because I felt like, oh my gosh, this is an opportunity for a new life. And imagine if my name was still Rosaline, what would be my stage name now? Right? First of all, <laughs> this is the freakiest story because I have the same story. No. Yes. And nobody knows this. No it's just way. like my husband and Chimano and maybe Saudi Soul. Really? And my sisters. <laughs> so I had this name, like, mm -hmm. My middle name growing up was Akinyi. Yes. I was like me Rosemary too. Akinyi Owoko. Okay. But I just didn't like Akinyi. Yeah. And I just didn't own it. And I didn't know why. And because you're a child, you can't explain like, I don't want this why name or yeah. I don't own this name. You don't, you don't have the words or 
the means of communicating. Yes. So I never introduced myself as a- Akini, Akini, even though I knew that was my name, mm-hmm. but I didn't know why I didn't want it. Yeah. So when I finished um, high school, even when you register for your cert- certificate, I yeah. never put that name. I used to put Rosemary or Woko. Oh, Woko. So okay. even people who went to high school with me, they knew me as Rosemary yes. or Woko. Okay. I didn't even put it on my certificate. I just didn't write it. So after um, high school, I went to my mom and I was like, now I want to apply for my passport. Can I get my um, birth certificate? And when I took my birth certificate, it read Rosemary Aniko Owoko. I had never no had my name. Way. Never saw it, nothing. So I said, is this my birth certificate? Who is Aniko? Yeah. <laughs> and my mom said, ah, it's you. I said, what do you mean? But I've been Akini. She said, you know, I was calling you Akini because I always wanted you to be called Akini. Akini. Oh, but you are Aniko. When you were born, you were named Aniko. Yeah. And your father loved that name because Aniko was his, um, my, my father's grandma. Okay. And he ran to register your uh, birth certificate as Aniko. And so I asked her, so why have you been calling me Akini? She's like, because I like the name. And I was like, mom, no you ruined way. my identity, my life. Because all yeah. my life, I feel like I had an identity crisis. Because you were never owning your name. No, and it's funny because you don't know why. Because yeah. since then, it's when I discovered myself, when I, I knew the name Aniko. And I felt like it was me. And, and you know, when I presented it to Saudi Soul, they were like, that's a beautiful name. Yeah. In fact, start calling yourself that. So people who used to be in high school with me, when they started seeing me on TV, when I used to work at KBC, they were like, oh, so she went to Nairobi because I'm from Molo. I'm from Nakuru. Yeah. She went to Nairobi and changed and her changed identity. Her yeah! <laughs> I'm like, no, this is what? me now. This so that's is so, so crazy. Yeah. You know what's funny? I was called Rosalie too because of my grandma. Yeah. But apparently, I couldn't say the word Rosalie. A lot of people couldn't say it. So I just changed it to Rosalind. But in drill sense, I was also Rosalie, named after my grandma. And that's so unique. It's, you never hear I that know, name, Rosalie. I right? It's so unique. It's re- it really is. Oh, but this is this is insane. This is the most insane podcast I've ever had to <laughs> Me meet. Me too. <laughs> my namesake to start like that. Then for all of us not to have known our identity our still identity. at a certain age. And I'm sure it sort of relates to who we are right now. We yeah. might not know exactly yeah. how, yeah. but I feel as though right now, even when I when I go to a room and I have to talk about who I am and I call myself Rosa, Rosalie, I feel so proud of it. Same. And I'm imagining if it was the other name, I probably wouldn't be feeling I like wasn't, this. That's what I'm saying. Like when you're not proud of something within yourself, mm. investigate why, you know? Certain yeah. things, you know, certain energies, certain places you don't want to be it's f- you need to figure out why because i just didn't want to be a kini and i didn't know why and so i just didn't use the name yeah. so sometimes even maybe we have been given names that don't resonate to us we need to yeah. change our names and names then. are powerful and thing. you need to change your name if you if it doesn't speak to you <laughs> I know. or you need to own your name if you don't have it <laughs> you know this this thing i came well it was sort of a research i was doing and i came to the conclusion after speaking to many other musicians and artists, every person I know who's very in tune with either their creativity or something in regard to just being a celebrity, they have a very unique name. It might not be their full name, but maybe even a middle name or a name that they gave themselves. And so you find someone nicknaming themselves something and turning into that mm. identity. Yeah, so that made me believe names are so powerful. They are definitely powerful. Honestly, if you look at anyone, anyone, an artist, a singer, a rapper, just look at their real names. It's always just so different from what you would expect. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's, it's wild. That's so wild. <laughs> this, this is the most random entrance to my podcast. I always do like a proper introduction to my guest. We just started Rosa and, you know, we, I didn't even do an introduction. So if you could allow me. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Rosa here is such an amazing artist. Like, I really, really love you and celebrate you. Thank you. When it comes to African soul music, R&B, pop music, she's really top of the top. I so can. I really do love the way you sing, you know, the way you do your runs, the way you do your harmonies, the way you do the soul. Yeah. There's a lot of soul in Rosa's songs, even if it's just a pop record, you do hear the soul. Um, on top of that, Rosa has three albums. 
Yes. Original copy was the first one. Then mm-hmm. there was a really dope EP in 2020, Waves. Waves. In 2022, <laughs> there was Rosaland. Yes. You might have already loved and had her dope songs like Consequences. Um, I'm just naming my favorite. Um, <laughs> Password is really dope. Um, only fans yes, with the end. Only fans. That is really dope as well. And there's another song, Jap- no, the Nyako, one with Japesa. Yes, Nyako is with Japesa. something. Japesa. Yes. With Japesa. Nyako is really something. So um, it's just really great to, to sit and talk to you. I mean, you really do deserve your spotlight, your flowers. Thank You've you. You've been quite prolific if, if I look at just the industry. Like you've really re- released dope projects. And I think... Yeah. The reason why we're talking now, even though the last uh, record came in 2022, is like when you have a dope project, it stands the test of time. It and does. I just feel like this interview is long overdue. Like um, we should have done it such a long time ago. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we're still going to do it and yeah. still talk about these records the because they're really perfect. dope. Is it? It's, yeah, I feel as though it's perfect because sometimes... Sometimes when I have to speak about my music, I'm not really in the mind space to want to talk about the music. I just want you to listen to the music. Where I am right now, I think I'm at the place where I don't mind speaking more about what has inspired my music so Mm. far. Yeah, it's really like a game of energies, this music thing. Really? (laughs) Yeah, it is. So, but right now I'm feeling very open. I feel like even my journey as a musician... I'm pretty sure. I think the first time I met you was how long ago? Maybe it's, it's a long yeah, time it's ago. It's like seven years ago. It's like seven years ago. And I must say, um, <laughs> Rosa, I think, was like among the very first clients that my PR yes. company had. And I appreciate how you and your management came to me then because you didn't know me so much, but you came you know, kind of so professional. Like, we know you're a dope PR chick yeah. and we want this achieved. How much do we need to pay you? Here's your money. Like, yeah. there was no haggling. We just trusted you to be honest. I love that so <laughs> much. And I, I think sometimes we crave for that. We crave to be seen for, you know, what we what do. do. And, and not people just saying stuff like, oh, I just knew I wouldn't ever afford you. Or I knew you were too busy. I hate when people make those yeah. assumptions. Like, just ask me. And also trying. I Honestly, I feel as though even the majority of the things that have been a success in my career have come from just trying. That block of, I'll give you a perfect example, even working with BN on OnlyFans. I was actually thinking about that because I was like, you really got a big one with this I, collab. I did. Because you know what's funny? I had kept telling him that I want to make music with him. And BN is actually the first person in my entire career to be honest with me about my craft. So one day I approached him. There was an exhibition or something at Sarit. Mm. And so I met Polycap first. And then now I approached Bien. And I told him, I really like how you write. I would love to just write with you. I don't need to make a song with you. I just want to write with you. And Bien goes like, you know what, Rosa? I've actually been meaning to tell you the day that I'll meet you. You need to work on your writing because your voice is really good. And you know, at that point, for someone to tell me that, I have no idea how I didn't take offense. I actually took it. I feel like I'm really exposing a deep secret right now. But <laughs> <laughs> but I felt like for Bien to be telling me that, he's an amazing songwriter. He's been in the industry for a while. For him to say there has to be a reason. He's not just saying it to make me feel less than what he is. Mm. And so I took that and I actually used it as fuel to go and work on my songwriting. And there was a time when I wasn't making music for about a year. I wasn't even going to studio. And I would sit down with books, songwriting books. And I would write anything that I'm learning. I would take notes and all that. And to this day, I tell people, for me to now end up sitting with him and Ben Sol and Viri to write a song together, I feel at that point, that's where all that hard work and that one statement, that's where it led me to. So I know you can listen to OnlyFans and be like, nice song. But to me, it really just speaks to the journey that I've been through ever since I had that one statement about my songwriting. 
Can you imagine? Ish, 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 yeah. ish. And I think if, if you say it that way, because I've had the previous records and then I had that album and I, I, I kind of felt that it was different. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was the writing, but also felt like it was also some sort of confidence that you carried yourself with in that record. Even wow. only fans, the things you're saying, I'm just like, this is a dope songwriter. Like that's how I, I, I experience the song and that's how I see it. Because wow. in the song, I think you even say uh, uh, like, which is the song about Machali Wan Nairobi? Is it only that fans? one? Yeah, it's the one. Machali Wan like, Nairobi. Yeah, like usinete ufalo kini kata once unanita malaya. I'm like. <laughs> This is some real shit being discussed in this song. Yeah, and normal me, honestly, would not even be writing like that. It's so funny now, like, the record has been out for months and months. But looking back, even the comments that I get on the video, on the social media videos, the ladies actually relate to those things. I related to. Yeah, I would have never written that. But the fact that now I, I put it out there and I saw that there's actually women who enjoy singing such lines, it <laughs> even gave me more confidence to just say whatever I feel. Mm. Yeah. I think it's it's amazing. It's amazing what you can learn from just one song. Yes. <laughs> or from one person or one from person. a couple of people. Exactly. Yeah. Or yeah. from your album, because that's now you reviewing it, you know, after a couple of months and you see what how people have been receiving. Oh yes. And I feel that's actually a very hard thing for me. Cause I'm one of those people who once I work on something, I let it go. Mm. I a lot of, even when, if I go to, let's say, to the club and I hear only fans playing and I'll just mind my business, like, that's not even my song. Because <laughs> once I do it, I just leave it alone. Mm. I feel like every song or every project is for that part of my life. Mm. And hopefully years later, like now even months later, someone will still listen to it and relate to it. So trying to go back and review it is, yeah, it's definitely a challenge. But you're working on that. I am, I am. Especially by seeking other people's opinions. Because I feel like I'm very hard on myself as an artist. No, we a lot of us, we have this whole wanting to be a perfectionist. I write something, then I'm like, I don't want to record this yet. Then I sing it to someone and they say, that's amazing. Mm. So that's second guessing. So I also don't want to second guess what I've already put out. So now I'm also learning how to just accept people's opinions of my music and also accepting that once I've put it out, I should now be open to receiving what it's giving back to mm. me. You know, because that, you know, that whole time you're in PR, you know, you have to do the marketing, you do your, your radio it's interviews. It's a lot and it can be it draining. Is. It's really draining. And what I think a lot of people might not realize is even as a creative, by the time you're done with that process, you're feeling very drained. Like a lot of your energy is gone. So even if it's a big song or it's an amazing song, like it's very easy for you to just get like lost in the hassle and of bustle course, of trying of to promote it. Yeah. You must find some time to step away from everything. And exactly. that's how you can even review, review it. the thing. Yes. But once you're in it, in it, in it, in it, you're lost in it that you don't see it from outside. Yeah. You should also be, try to be an outsider of your own projects and mm. just review yourself and say, am I happy with where I am? Which yeah. actually leads me to the next question. Are you happy with where you are? Sort of. I can say... So I'm really big on like meditation and my spiritual life. So of late after, obviously after my last project, I've been taking my time out. I've still been going into studio. I actually have a few singles that... You had a couple of great big shows. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. My performances have been on fire. Ah, girl, <laughs> back to back. You show up. But now aside from that, so I've actually just been taking that time to like meditate, speak more to myself to make sure by the time I'm, I'm also at the place where I can release a new project. Mm. I'm coming from like a clean slate. Yes. Yeah. And now the problem, well, not really the problem, but the issue has been, um, me having to talk to myself and ask myself, are you happy with what you're doing? Are you happy with the music you've been putting out? And do you know, Aniko, it's only now, I think I'm now almost 11 years into my music mm. career and I just realized that I didn't know why I was doing music. 
it's now as I'm sitting before you that I'm starting to understand why I was doing music and what music means to me. So if you look at my background and how I ended up in music, it was very random. I was singing covers on YouTube. Someone calls me into a studio. When I'm at the studio, someone shows up and asks, have you ever performed anywhere? Would you come and perform? Who am I cutting raising for? In like five days later, Banner Boy. I'm sharing the same stage with Banner Boy. I leave that stage. Two days later, I'm signed to a record label. I'm signed to a record label. One year later, I already have an album. I'm in spaces with people at the time when Saudi was just like now becoming who they are. I was already now in the spaces trying to see how to work with them and all that, you know? So it's been such a rat race, race. for me. Yeah. yeah. And looking back, I realized I was doing music because I found myself in it. Do you know? Which kind of makes me... When I think about you, your journey as well. Oh my God. It's so crazy how we mirror yeah, each other. Because do. before this interview, I was just letting you know how uh, with this podcast, I've just rediscovered myself and yeah. started just getting back to who I am and what mm. I love because I ended up in PR by mistake. Just yeah. my friends out is all asking me, please help us. And then other people asking and then getting opportunities and then it becoming a business. And then now I'm answerable to the industry and to the business. And yeah. I forgot about myself. About you. I didn't write for such a long time and I love writing. And I only started writing again like a few months back, but I didn't write for like a whole two years and then I didn't do any interviews I think from 2019 to 2023 you know more than two years and I didn't want to do yeah. it I didn't even want to so it took me some time to have conversations with, with myself yourself. actually and that's when I realized it's very important to talk to yourself um, really question yourself if you're happy with where you are you know yeah. because things might be happening you might be successful but does that give does you that happiness give you, yeah. so I think for a long time I've been happy with the industry in the, standards of happiness yeah. to be successful in PR, but I wasn't happy that I kind of lost myself and just wasn't the broadcaster and the storyteller I always wanted to, to, to be. And th with this podcast, I feel like I'm finding myself back. I'm finding my voice. Mm. Because when you're in PR, you're busy promoting other people, other things, making them happy, doing what they, you want, they, they want you to do. But yeah. what do I want to do? So I think I want to always be conscious of the fact that I'm an individual. I'm an artist in my own right. Yes. And there are certain things that make me happy. I don't want to be pulled out by the world and by business that I forget yeah. the essence of who I am. And, you know, even to support that, it's it's even more important when you have to go through that process because you're an artist. So for me, I used to draw a lot. I'm very good with pencil art portraits so I used to do all that all the way from high school but now when I joined uni like I forgot about it and in uni that's when I found myself in the music industry as well and now looking back and I think to myself when did I ever stop drawing and I feel like there's a part of me that has been sitting unfulfilled because I haven't embraced the other parts of my artistic life so that's sort of the conversation I've been having to have with myself and understanding that my purpose in even doing music is to make the next day better for someone. I honestly, that's the reason I do music. I just want to, to know that I was able to create something for three minutes that could make Aniko think about today as the best day of her mm. life in comparison to her feeling like she can't make it another 24 hours that's literally it. Because I feel that's what I need for myself. That's really why I listen to music. I know that a lot of artists would listen to music for inspiration. Of course, I do that when I'm doing my research and all that. Or some people listen to music just for like entertainment purposes. I find it really hard to listen to music for entertainment. Yeah. So I think even that's why if you notice a lot of my music, I have a few party songs like disco, yes. which I love. Me too. But also I have a lot of songs that relate to either love or mm. my family because I always feel like those are words that have 
wanted to hear or I need to hear or the inner child in me would want to of hear. Course. So I think that's where my purpose for making music came from. And now having to learn that, you know what's funny? I even ended up realizing that's why even when I was younger, when I was asking other people to make music with me and I'd be like, you know how the industry is? People are saying, you just need one banger, one party song. And I used to ask myself, how can you guys go into a studio and just make a party song like that at the snap of a finger? But for me, it used to be so hard to get to that point, mm. you know? So now by doing this, like this work on my own, I've, at least I'm able to understand, okay, when you need to do a party song, you're doing it for this specific reason. When you want to make a song for yourself or to help someone, this is how you go about mm. it. But I don't think, I feel like I was just going with the flow. Now it's time to release a song. Okay, release it. You know, and it's mm. it's really not that fulfilling to me as an artist. So I'm I'm glad that I've gone through this entire process. Yeah. I'm also glad for you. And I remember when you did the listening party for your album, um, Rosaland, you yeah. actually custom made some artworks for us. Do you remember? Yes, I did. That was so cute and so special. Yeah. Yeah, because we had a little gift bag and there was an artwork. And then I think someone said Rosa herself painted these. Yes, I did. So you can, you can see where yeah. the journey started. Already yeah. by the time I was releasing Rosaland, even if you listen to some of the songs, songs like i have a song there for my mom mama which i've just always wanted to do a song for my mom mm. and so the fact that i finally was able to do it i feel at that point when i was recording rosaland is when i had really started like that journey of having this music conversations with myself mm. and you know how the the music industry is honestly it's really easy to get lost in the sauce yeah <laughs> yeah things can be so good and lost not even, in the sauce i like that yeah <laughs> this can be so good or so bad out of nowhere yeah. that you just forget that there's life outside yeah i think it's important to to have conversations with yourself and to come back to your roots and to what you want to do yeah there's just a lot of noise and nice. then that 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 also messes up sometimes with your identity because mm. I feel like I also had kind of an an identity crisis after I left How? my TV job because I used to be known like the the TV girl. So oh. once I was not the TV girl, I'm like, who am I? Who you know. You? And then once yeah. I left the TV job, I always felt like. I still wanted to be everywhere. I wanted to be at all events because that was the nature of my work. Mm. But then now I'm not working there, but I still feel like I need to be seen at these places. So it took mm. me a long time to be okay with not being everywhere, not being seen, and just being comfortable to be where I am, even if it's home. And there was an event and I wasn't there. And I think because my show's tagline was also like, if you didn't see it on Grapevine, it probably didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> it just... G Got into my brain like, and if Aniko wasn't there, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. So if something happened and I what? wasn't there, I just feel like, how was I not there as you, well? You basically started like living your slogan, like your show slogan. You believed it. Yes, so much that that was a lifestyle. It was my life. And so once I didn't, wasn't on the show, yeah, I, I was detached from my life. And I'm like, no, what is my life now? And I think that's just one part of my different moments of having conversations with myself. Mm. I've always having conversations with myself. You know, when I wasn't Saudi Soul's publicist anymore, I was like, oh my God, who am I? Because yeah. everybody in the industry knew me as Aniko's, sorry, so, uh, Saudi Soul's publicist. Yeah. Yeah, and that was also a very difficult period. So yeah, there are always moments. And then I think oh, wow. I became the PR queen and I'm like, oh no. Yeah, then Where is Aniko? Aniko is yeah. lost. <laughs> I'm not a PR queen. I'm, I'm just I'm a broadcaster. I'm just a music lover. Don't, you guys don't forget. Yeah. I'm a music curator. So I'm constantly, you know, trying to find different um, sides of myself and just kind of give them life. Basically, mm. what you're saying, man, this interview is so sweet. Ah. It is. <laughs> I feel like our life, like, we're yeah. bouncing off yeah. experiences that we both Imagine. have been through. I yeah. love this. That's how you know it was. It was destined. <laughs> it was. And even when you said this was the right time, I was like, why Why was it the right time? But I feel yeah. like it, it kind of is it's the kind right of time. Is. I also feel that the Aniko I met years back, we would not be having such a conversation. Not at all. Honestly. Not at all. Yeah. And also for the time that I've known you, you know you have a reputation super hardworking. So already I know in my mind, if I'm talking to Aniko, that's why if I call you for anything, <laughs> I know Aniko is like 
all business. Yeah. So even for to get the opportunity to be able to see like how your experiences have influenced who you've become right now, I feel like I'm getting an idea of a side of you that I had never seen. Of course. Yes. And the same with you because I, I obviously was, my, and my team did your PR at a very early stage in your career. Yes. And then now being able to review your music, the, the records, the brand, even the visuals, I just see the growth that you've yeah. taken through the years. So even though you're still having conversations with yourself, I must commend you because Thank you have you. done a really great job at growing yeah. And uh, just nurturing even your voice. I think even oh, in the beginning, yes. we couldn't hear how powerful we can now hear Rosa in a record. So I think uh, maybe in the beginning, you even ha ha hadn't tapped into the power into. vocals like you have now. Yeah. Right? You know, it's so funny. Now, Aniko, I swear to you, even if you hear me do like... I turn my voice into some random soprano in this chorus. Then out of nowhere, it goes into a deep alto. There's a reason I've done it. Before, I used to just sing because everyone told me, you know, you have a good voice. Mm. Now, I even go to the studio and I tell the producer specifically, today I want to sing a song where I don't have to hit any high mm. note. I just want to be mellow or sing on my low notes the whole way. Which is so different. Like, I feel like I'm experiencing music holistically. It's, and differently from yeah, the it's past. it's different. Yeah, That's it's so really dope. different. That's so dope. That's so dope. But that, then also that comes with its own pressure. Of course. Because now you know that I know what's right. I know what I sound good on. So the challenge now comes in where I have to find the balance. Of course. Of not to overthink things and also still be a creator. So of that's course. what I'm working on. Which that's I think dope. that's a that's a permanent job. Like it will yeah. constantly be ongoing. Yeah. But judging from your last um albums, Waves and the and, and Rosaland, mm -hmm. eh, you I don't know what your what could be coming because yeah. that Rosaland album really was a dope album. That's the type of album you release and you can chill, like because I, it was yeah. really well made, everything. Wow, maybe I should just start chilling for a bit. <laughs> days <laughs> but i've been recording though but yeah i think no i think you're right also i feel so do you, do you ever listen to an album and you feel like this is unheavy just like it's a heavy album or this is this is light like i can just listen to it and keep it moving yeah 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 i feel like yeah. this especially rosaland is one of those waves i feel waves was one of those light ones i feel uh, waves is lighter yeah it's yeah. way lighter yeah, yeah, yeah. you can just listen and just like keep going enjoy enjoy the vibes and then when it's yeah. done it's done but with rosaland i think even for myself i find myself i listen to one song and i have to pause yeah. And like just take it in. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. the instrumentation, the vocals, the writing, the stories. Yeah. It's so much heavier. It is. So it maybe is. actually that's why I've been on this phase of just. Yeah, because it must have really drained you out. You really gave yeah. your all on that record and it can be felt. You know, even songs like Password, you know, the lyrics. I'm like so yeah. brilliant. <laughs> I just love it so much. Like if anyone is listening to this podcast, just go and listen to, to Password. To Password, And wow. it made me actually want to ask you about that song specifically. Like, yeah. um, were you kind of like a, a gangster? Ah! And then you fell in love and opened up yourself so much that you wanted to write it like that in a song. Y yeah, I don't know. That's actually <laughs> a good way of looking at it. But really, if... I don't know. If I if I think about it, when I was writing that song specifically, I try to put myself in the shoes of someone who... Okay, let me not say in the shoes of... That's probably me. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm, I think I'm one of those people who I know I'm vulnerable. Like inside, I'm a very emotional person. Mm -hmm. And I easily get like attached to good energy. I'm one of those people like... If I meet you once and we are laughing and all that and we click over something, I'll text you next week. Like, I'll make sure I keep contact with you, you know? And so I realized, like, despite me being like that, when I get into relationships, I'm very um, critical. Oh, my God, we are so the same. Really? Me too. <laughs> 
<laughs> what? Yeah, so you find yeah. yourself. You can talk. We go into yeah, yeah, rooms. Yeah. We talk to people. We are yeah. open. Yeah. But now when it comes to now one specific person. You just find that you are concrete almost. Yeah. yeah. And I have to, and I'm starting to scrutinize everything and yeah. thinking, do you have my best interest at heart? Of course. And so when I was writing password, I was just putting myself in that position of someone has, they've not even put in an effort really to try to, to woo me. But you know, when you meet someone and all of a sudden it's like the wall that you had, it sort of feels like it was so unnecessary. Yeah. yeah. And just something about them. Like you feel like they'd never had to put in too much of an effort mm. to prove themselves. Yeah. And so that's where now the password story mm -hmm. came from. Yeah. <laughs> but if I think about it, I think growing up, that's just always been me. I'll be that's happy. Always you know, that. me. That's always been me. Yeah. Well, so maybe that's yeah. why you really relate to the song or you like it. I think so. That's always been me. It's like I'm this and then I'm that. I'm like that. I'm very much open to so many people and so many things. But then yeah. there are certain things I'm like, psh. it's like even it's a in block, it's a real yeah, block. Yeah, even in our household, everybody knows like I am, I'm the, I'm the woman of steel. No way. Yeah. Me too. Like if I say no, it's, <laughs> it's a no. No, yeah. <laughs> Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Yeah, Rosa. so it's, it's shocking for you then, I guess, when in moments when you find yourself naturally a opening 100%, up. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Or yeah. that one person who I just feel like like I'm an open book and I'm like, I don't even have to think. To think, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Then, yeah, so that's the stage of the eyes <laughs> person. I'm glad you could dream. That relate. is so dope. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rosa, for coming Thank to you. VIP Access. I'm hoping when the new album, whenever it's ready, no pressure. I'm not going to be Thank you. those <laughs> interviewers. So when should we expect the next record? What are you going to do in the next yeah. five years? That's the noise you are talking about. It's too much noise. <laughs> yeah, no pressure. Like, just do you. We follow you. I follow you. Okay. I love you. And Thank you. And whatever you will release this year. And if you don't, I have wonderful records from you. I appreciate that. Yes. I just want you to be happy and to continue having these conversations with yourself. Because so far, so good. The music really shows the growth and just yeah. the maturity in many ways and I, I really love that for you Rosa thank you mm. and thank you so much for having me also as I said I, I even feel like I'm getting to know you even better and as someone with so much experience of the industry for me to also be able to just understand like what Aniko goes through or to have you as an open book, basically, it's also really motivating for me, even as an artist. I'm feeling like I can go out and make my music and all that. And I know there are other people who are not artists who are relating to my story. You know, it's like it's not just all business all the time. Of course. So thank you. Thank you so it's much, been amazing. Rosa. That is um, the only Rosa right yes. here on VAP Access. If you were watching or listening, we need you to stream Rosa's music. So please go out to your favorite um, DSPs and on social media, follow the only Rosa. Show her some love. Share her music. Remember, VAP Access is also coming to you every Tuesdays at 7 a.m. East African time. We'll be back next week with another soulful and uh, amazing individual. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. VIP Access Season 4 is proudly supported by the Australian High Commission.